my name is Chloe Wong and I love singing and songwriting. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I also just love like art in general. Um, I love painting, digital art, digital design, just anything. I love expressing myself through these different art forms. My name is Chloe Wong. I'm 18 years old and I'm a singer. Uh, I don't really remember when I started singing, but definitely when I was like really little. Um, since then, I've performed like at school, talent shows, um, here and there, like at different venues, and I just love songwriting and singing whenever I can. A lot of my friends tell me that I write sad songs. <laughs> just like I feel like when I'm stressed out or I have like anxiety or I'm just like a lot of emotions at once, I just like to like write it out because it helps me a lot. When I'm performing, I usually pay attention a lot to like if I'm making a mistake or something like that. But most of all, I just really want to convey the message that I'm trying to get out and hope that people can connect to it. I want to write songs for artists or perform more. Um, my big goal is to like go on tour one day or just play, play a lot of concerts is one of my goals. Acting off emotions, never been impulsive like this. Try to be more grateful, my gratitude's unstable right now I just wanna know the lessons left I have to learn It feels like I've been here before too many times around just to get let down Hi there, could you introduce yourself real quick? Hi, my name is Chloe Wong and I'm 18 years old. Hey right, Chloe, how did the audition go today? It was really good, I had a lot of fun. And then what did you perform for us today? Um, I did my own song. You're so you're a singer-songwriter? Yeah. And then how long have you been singing and songwriting? Um, since quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, and then did you maybe have any advices, messages to our television audience who are watching this right now? Uh, yeah, like if you love something, just keep doing it and do what makes you happy. Of course. And then did you maybe have any socials or any platforms where people can reach you at? Yeah, you can listen to my music on anything um, under Chloe Wong. And my Instagram is Chloe Wong with two N's. And yeah. Thank you so much, Chloe, and best of luck to you moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Tradition is tasted, resplendent with grain. Sips of time slip through life. I'd hold this taste to feel forever. It pours a century of wisdom. It pours a generation of legacy. Sourced from a sacred mountain, it rises. How many ways can this taste dazzle in days? This taste lives forever. So we are inside the home studio of Jared, our guest today. Thank you so much for inviting us. Hey, thanks for being here. There are so many great work. Your Ninja Turtle and Godzilla, and I see the Peach Dragon. Wow. Well, I'm gonna wait for the interview. Let's do it. Let's do it. Today, we're here with concept artist Jared Krzyzewski. Thank you so much for joining us, Jared. It's hey. so nice to meet you. Nice to be here. Thank you. 
course. So first question, could you maybe tell us about some of your most popular works that the audience may know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess uh, most recently would be Godzilla and Kong, mm -hmm. uh, where I designed uh, Godzilla Evolved, mm -hmm. uh, Suko, Shimo, mm -hmm. Scar King. Uh, for the last uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, I designed Mecha Godzilla for that mm. movie as well. I have to ask you an honest question. What is the concept art? Yeah, concept art is uh, the process very early on in the movie, uh, in the making of a movie, where um, they have a script, but they don't know what anything looks like yet. So they come to a concept artist and say, hey, can you figure out what this stuff looks like mm -hmm. so we can uh, have a better idea of what we need to build or what needs to happen in production. So sometimes it's very early on in the script phase. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the script hasn't even been written completely. So, um, so they come to someone like me and they say, hey, can you figure this out? And uh, then I work very closely ah. with the production to make that happen. I see. So you're creative. Very, yeah, very it's, creative. it's, it's the early dreaming stage mm. of, of the process. So uh, they, uh, directors really like this part. <laughs> it's really fun for everybody. Mm. Do they give you like qualities like it has to have this or do you just start from like a blank slate? Mm. It depends. Every, every situation is different. Uh, sometimes they're very specific. It has to look this way. It has mm. to do this. Um, other times they're like, we have no idea. Here's here you go free reign. Mm. Yeah, so it's it it really depends uh, from project to project and director to director. Ah. So do you get to involved with the process of filming? No, usually uh, once once I've produced my art and and uh, part of the process, it's see you later, and, ah. and I don't see the movie until three years later. Whoa! Yeah, so it's different department, huh? Right, okay. right. It's very very early on in in pre production. So there's uh, pre-production, production, and then uh, post-production. Mm -hmm. So in the pre-production stage, it's it's writing, storyboarding, and concepting. Mm. And have you ever? So how long does that process take? From like, uh, it depends on project to project, because mm -hmm. uh, and and what their needs are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have a lot. Sometimes it's very little. Uh, it, it all depends on on the movie itself. Mm. So you do everything from coming up with the idea of the creature to 3D printing, I'm guessing, mm. and then painting, designing, all uh, that. Yeah, it, it depends. You know, it all mm. it's all dependent. Mm. Um, but usually, uh, I, I just get a vague description of the character or creature, mm. and then uh, it's up to me to develop the look of it and then uh, we go through a process of back and forth of like mm -hmm. uh, change this change that oh. uh, and then uh, and then uh, we all <laughs> and then we all just kind of figure it out together that's why it takes a long time huh okay. it, it is a it is, it is to make a, a movie is a very big oh, process yeah. Is it harder when like companies are like, you do whatever, you have complete creative freedom versus like, you know, more information? Yeah, um, sometimes I have complete, total mm -hmm. uh, creative freedom to do whatever I like. And uh, and those are always great, but uh, daunting. Because I'm like, oh my God, it's up to me. Yeah. Um, so it, every situation is, is totally unique. Does it ever be like, oh, you have a great idea and then the company's like, no. Um, it, there might be restrictions on certain things that they, they want, um, but usually they're very trusting. They, co mm. they come to you, they know that you, uh, you've got a certain amount of experience, so they're, mm -hmm. they're pretty you know, trusting of, of you and your process throughout it. Do you have your favorite um, movies you've done or shows? Which one was your favorite? Um, well, I loved uh, Godzilla X Kong, obviously. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, <laughs> Uh, that was a great uh, process. Um, I do love Peach Dragon, mm. um, which is a the movie. Disney. I yeah, love yeah. Movie. Oh. Uh, so I designed a dragon for that, and that was a very um, sweet movie, and I really enjoyed the mm -hmm. the final result as well. So um, the Ninja Turtles, obviously, yeah. you know, because that was that was a bucket list project for me. Um, very exciting to be a part of. Mm. So from, you said you do like 3D printing once you've um, created it, and then do you also like paint and do everything from start to finish yourself, or? Um, sometimes, yeah, uh, if, they, if they request it, I'll produce a, a maquette of it. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of the times I work uh, 
depending on the client, I'll, I'll draw or I'll use 3D. Mm. Um, if they really want a uh, 3D maquette that they can show off, mm -hmm. uh, then we'll 3D print those and, and uh, uh, produce those for the clients as well. So they can, mm. so everybody, you know, it takes a lot of people to say yes to something. Mm. Uh, so they, they all have to approve kind of every angle of, of it. <gasps> So yeah, it, it can be a it can be a very uh, big pro yeah big process yeah absolutely. Would you say that is the most difficult part of your job, or what what is your difficult part in your job? I, I guess it's it's not difficult. Uh -huh. It's it's just the the hardest part is kind of figuring out what they want, mm -hmm. right? And how do I give that to them mm -hmm. um, in the way that they want? Because uh, some are very some have very specific visions mm -hmm. that this they're they're trying to achieve, and I'm trying to kind of uh, fit fit in uh, wherever I can, you know, to make sure that they're happy. So I think maybe that's the difficult part is just making sure that the client gets what they're what they want and that they're happy with with what they with what they get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're in your studio today, so does the magic happen all here? <laughs> uh, yeah, it does. Uh, it's just me in my little garage. Um, sometimes uh, I will go on site uh, to work with them directly, mm -hmm. or um, now nowadays it's mostly through Zoom, mm. Zoom calls, phone mm -hmm. calls, uh, things like that. But I've uh, certainly sat side by side with directors on various projects. So, and do you work sometimes different project in once? Or can you focus on one project? Yeah, sometimes I can um, I can juggle multiple projects at a time. Oh. Um, sometimes there are uh, waiting periods, so I send stuff off and I'm and I'm waiting for notes. Mm -hmm. um, so in that case, you know, I'll I'll work on another project in the meantime. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, sometimes you're you can juggle quite a few projects all at once. So it, it all depends on <laughs> you know how, how busy the industry is. Uh, yeah. So like one part of your work you're doing maybe like Pete's Drago and then you have to do like Godzilla or yeah. Scary Koichi. Yeah, that happened, that happened. Uh, that happened on Antlers. Um, so I was working on Scary Wendigos, mm. and uh, then I would come home and work on Megan. So I was working on dolls. Mm. Uh, so so the 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 kind of gear shift that has to happen yeah. between like scary and yet scary yet cute or you know things like that so yeah there is a, a kind of uh, mental gymnastics that has to happen uh, from project to project so where do you get inspiration from for like all these different projects mm, because so, it, it is yeah. all different yeah, yeah. Uh, it depends i guess um you know i i absorb everything that i can uh, mm -hmm. as much mm -hmm. information that i can uh, uh, in the beginning stages of a project, I'll do a lot of research and reference gathering. Mm -hmm. um, that way, if they have ideas or questions, I can show them like, well, what do you think about this mm -hmm. or this? And that way I can kind of give them options to pick from. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot of ra uh, research uh, at the beginning stages. So it's not like only creative, you do research. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of research that, that can be involved sometimes because they might want a scientific reason for mm -hmm. for these things. Right. So mm -hmm. I have to be able to back that up as much as oh, I can. Oh, you have to do that. So, not always, not but always sometimes, like, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a little leeway in there, but yes. Hi, my name is Jared Krzyzewski. I'm a concept artist in the industry, and this is my studio. So uh, I use a program called ZBrush, um, which is a digital sculpting software, and is uh, largely the uh, primary sculpting software in the industry. And it's, it's very... Uh, very fun, uh, very intuitive once once you get into the process. What are you doing now? Uh, so yeah, right now I'm just uh, uh, sculpting, uh, working on details in the face. So after you get the um, primary and secondary forms resolved, mm -hmm. uh, then you can start having all the fun stuff, uh, ah. which is uh, detailing and detailing. Uh, this, this just allows me to, to push and pull shapes around and until uh, uh, I find something that I'm happy with. Huh. So it's it's always a, a process of discovery. Super detailed. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, like when I see on the film, it's 
a little bit far away, so I didn't know that would be so like, details. Like, yeah, you got. Now. Yeah, you got to get up there in the details and uh, and and work your way around and, and uh, zoom in and out, and then uh, I'll throw it into uh, another software uh, called Keyshot, and. And this is where we can kind of get a very good lighting and uh, it, it feels cinematic. So yeah. uh, whenever I present it, I present in this uh, software mm -hmm. and uh, directors can say, oh, I can see the, you know, oh, it's you know, gonna, gonna be big and scary or, you know, whatever it is. So is this your own character? Sorry? Original? Is this your original character? Yeah, yeah. This is just uh, uh, a sculpt that I've done on the stream, just for fun with mm -hmm. uh, with my buddies, and uh, we like to just challenge each other and uh, uh, push 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 each other's skill sets. So it's it's all all for good fun. Yeah. So do you work entirely in Z brush, or do you? use up any other softwares? Um, I do draw uh, or I will um, I'll use a, a program called Krita uh, which is free it's a free piece of software um, and so depending on the client and what they're asking for I will uh, I'll draw or I will sketch an idea first because uh, it, it can be uh, more time-consuming to work in 3d so um, I, I might work some ideas out uh, on paper, a digital paper first, okay. um, and then when we're happy with the kind of blueprint, yeah. uh, then I'll take it into 3D and realize it. Um, and what's helpful about 3D mm -hmm. is that uh, the client can look at it from all angles. You really get a sense of, of how it works um, mm. full, fully 3D. Um, and then it can go on to various pipelines. So it can go, it can get 3D printed. It can go to video games. It could go mm -hmm. to, uh, it could go to the visual effects house where they make a cinematic model. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very helpful for the pipeline. Um, sometimes it goes on to become a toy or you know things like that. So there's uh, a lot of benefits to using 3D uh, mm -hmm. in your software. What about the textures? Like when you have to put the texture on, do you s still use ZBrush or? You can use uh, you can use ZBrush. You can uh, you can texture in uh, the program here by uh, by layering on textures this way. Mm -hmm. There's also uh, a program called Substance Painter, which is really a standard 3D uh, texturing program, um, and uh, it's it looks great. Um, so yeah, there's lots of avenues you can go to to, uh, to texture in. Uh, it just depends on um, where the project, you know, where it's going to go. If it's going to go to a video game or if it's going to go to a cinematic house, um, they have slightly different processes. So you just uh, you just need to know where it needs to go, and then uh, then you can process it however you like. Okay, next question. Oh, I have. Actually, I have two questions. So first question is like, do you also use Maya? And the second question is, what's the difference between ZBrush and Maya? Um, yeah, uh, I do use Maya. Uh, Maya is a overall uh, technical package uh, for 3D. So you can do a little bit of everything inside of Maya. Um, you're going to do your rigging and simulations in Maya. Um, ZBrush is largely a 3D sculpting package. Um, so when we need to get like all the, the little details like this, um, then we're gonna use ZBrush for that. And um, when we're ready to make this a riggable model, then you have to take it into Maya and retopologize it, add UVs, uh, and take it through the pipeline process. So um, while they're both very complex. Uh, Maya is huge. You can do everything inside of Maya. Um, but ZBrush is largely just sculpting focused. I, know, I think it looks like the ZBrush is very based on drawing. It is. It is. Uh, ZBrush uh, has its roots in what they call 2.5D illustration. Um, so uh, when ZBrush was created, it was originally an illustration package. 
and then as it evolved, it became the kind of like go-to sculpting package. So uh, there's a lot of weird uh, quirks inside a ZBrush that you can uh, do uh, for presentation and things like that. So it's, it's very fun. Ready to explore media scenes with Creative World. From cameras to editing, hosting, and beyond, let's level up your skills and carve a path to that dream job. We are here to cheer on everyone pursuing with their entertainment dreams. So drop us a message at the link below and let's ignite your media journey. Yoyoka is a 14-year-old drummer from Japan who now lives in Los Angeles. In 2021, she was the youngest drummer to be made on the top 500 drummers on the historical website Drummer World. She has made two appearances on the popular American TV show Ellen, and here's our pick for today. Next, Godzilla alert. The defo real line. So uh, this is kind of like a chibi or deformed but realistic style of Godzilla. And there were a few offerings. Uh, one of the first ones was this gigantic defo real Godzilla 1954. Um, the Rick Boy version featured not only the light up dorsal fins, but also uh, a train where you can swap um, uh, swap out the arms so Godzilla can hold and bite the train. Fans of Evangelion and Godzilla can rejoice with the Godzilla X Evangelion collaboration. The standard one can be bought from uh, all the different uh, retailers as well as the Evangelion store. The Shonen Rick Boy version uh, can be bought on the Godzilla store or on the Shonen Rick Boy uh, website. This one features a light up effect. Alright, Godzilla 2004 gets paired up with Minya from Final Wars. This is the Shonen Rick Boy version. And also for the Shonen Rick Boy version of Godzilla 2003 from the movie Tokyo SOS, he gets paired up with a dead Kamibas. Alright, the Toho Maniacs line. This one has the controller of Planet X. So a uh, very unique um, addition to the York Godzilla collection. The Gigantic series. Now collectors love these big boys. Uh, but the year of 2023 was a year of reissues with only just one new sculpt in the Gigantic series. Um, so very interesting choices for the reissues. Uh, we also have uh, a bonus item there for Godzilla 1962 and Kong was the only new sculpt. So let's first look at Godzilla 1962. So this version has the light up feature and also has this kind of uh, bonus character um, which is pretty big um, and uh, I can't remember exactly uh, which scene this cartoon character is from uh, but this was issued once for the 30 centimeter version of the X Plus Godzilla 1962 but I think it had like a box behind him. This time he's uh, fully uh, sculpted with a, uh, showing his back as well. All right, Kong 2021 is the only new sculpt in the year of 2023. So uh, let's see, so Kong, uh, looks like Kong. <laughs> uh, no accessories, no articulation whatsoever. Um, surprise, there's no battle axe, but maybe they'll reissue one in the future. Sadly, however, he's not in scale with the gigantic Godzilla 2021. Uh, sorry, 2019. Uh, and the 2019 did get a reissue. I think they call it the blue clear or like poster version. It's not really movie accurate. Uh, the gaps on the tail were not fixed. Thank you for watching.
for watching Creative World.